Hello. Hello. Alejandro Escovedo. Yeah. How you doing, Chris? I'm great. It's great to talk to you. Great to talk to you. How hot is it in Austin, Texas today? You know, it's actually a cool day. It's beautiful. It's overcast. And we've had a little bit of a much-needed rain, actually. Well, we're really excited about seeing you up here on Sunday at the Sims Benefit Concerts and um, looking forward to seeing you inside Cat's Cradle and performing with a great all-star group of folks from from NC. But I thought maybe we'd start a little bit with your your past and how you kind of got into music. There's a a connection to film that brought you to the music scene. (laughs) Yes. um, Way back when... um, was around 1974 or five. My friend and I wanted to make a movie about the worst band in the world, you know, oh. that was kind of loosely based on kind of the Stooges, but, you know, guys who couldn't play, though. The Stooges are great yeah. musicians. But um, anyway, and the band kind of like that. And since we couldn't play, we uh, thought we'd be cool in the band, in the film. Mm-hmm. So we became the band in the film and eventually ditched the film and became a full-time band. And that band was The Nuns. Right. You know? Amazing. Yeah. How much um, <laughs> How much influence did, because you come from a family of musicians, right? How much influence yeah. did your older brothers have on you? Well, it's, it's funny because they had a great influence on me. But, it, you know, as my music evolved, I started to see more and more of what I had gotten from my brothers, you know. Mm. But yeah, there's um, 13 kids, wow. and something like eight eight of us are professional musicians, you know. So, wow. it's a lot of music, and uh, they were great, and still are great musicians. I don't know if people realize that you've got a connection to uh, the North Carolina band Whiskey Town as well. You were on that uh, their album, The Strangers Almanac, actually singing on a few tracks, including "Excuse Me While I Break My Own Heart." That's 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 correct. I first met um, Whiskey Town in Chicago. We were playing at a place called Fitzgerald's in Berwyn, mm. and they were playing a gig with us, and uh, they were great. I really loved them. And then um, I was kind of in between labels at the time. Okay. And Ryan uh, introduced me to the uh, to the Bloodshot uh, folks through Ryan. And then, uh, you know, we started talking. We put out the first record, which was More Miles Than Money. And then uh, I did a Man of... No, I did Bourbon Artist Blues. And then I did a record called A Man of the Influence, hmm. which I did in North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Actually, I did two of those records. I did uh, Bourbon Artist Blues. Some of it was done at, at Chris's studio outside of uh, uh, Carborough there. Yeah. And then, um, and then we made... Man of the Influence at Mitch Easter's studio in uh, Kern- Kernersville. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Kernersville. And he's got the most amazing studio out there. So we had a wonderful time making that record. And actually, that's one of my favorite records that I've made. A lot of our friends from North Carolina were on that record, mm-hmm. from John Worcester and uh, um, Chip Robinson and, and Lynn Blakey and Caitlin lot of people you know so uh it was really it had a lot to do with north carolina that record so this show on sunday it's not just an all-star band it's really sounds like a gathering of a lot of your friends between mitch easter and chris stamey and you know caitlin carey who you were with uh, when she was with whiskey town so uh, this yeah. must be a really exciting uh show yes i love all those people and lynn of course i've known you know i first met lynn blakey the True Believers were playing in Chapel Hill at the Kate's, at Cat's Cradle. Yeah. And um, we had nowhere to go, really, you know. And so uh, Linda Hopper and Lynn Blakey said we could go with them to Athens. And we were kind of stay with them for about a week there in Athens. You yeah. Know? I, I was booking the tours, and they weren't that great of tours. So we were there about a week with them, but it was wonderful, you know, and that's how I met Lynn. So it's been a long time, long relationship with them. Let's talk about the Sims Foundation because you've been involved for, I think, what is now 28 years. Are you, are you one of the founders of the Sims Foundation? Yeah, the, the Sims Foundation was founded in, uh, it was 1995. Yeah. You know, and, and the founders were uh, 
Sims Ellison was a bass player in a band called Pariah. And they were a great band, and everyone loved them. And, and Sims was very much loved in in the city in, in Austin. Yeah. And uh, he committed suicide, and it was a huge loss to the to the town and the music scene here. Yeah. And at that time, of course, it was a much smaller place with a very tight tight community of musicians. You know. Yeah. So um, this writer journalist um, Michael Corcoran wrote an article asking, why doesn't someone do something about this? Mm. And actually called out um, Don Harvey and, and Wayne Nagel, who owned a rehearsal complex in Austin, where everyone gathered. It was like our community center. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they, they took up the call and uh, called uh, Don Ellison, uh, which, who was Sims' father. Yeah. And uh, Walter Taylor was a lawyer and myself, and that was... Uh, and also Peyton Wimmer, who was a therapist, was with us at that time also. Mm. Yeah, I don't think people realize that being a musician, you know, it's not a nine to five job where you've got these health benefits that you can rely on and make a phone call and go see somebody to get help. It's a bit different. You've got to, it's going to cost you. So with, that's almost, you know, I would think for a lot of folks, um, that's a hurdle, right? Because if you're, if you're a burgeoning musician, it's not like there's a ton of cash coming in. And No, um, there's, you know... There's, you know, when you're starting out, especially in those days, they were, you know, we were just touring and touring and being away from home for long periods of time, yeah. you know, and uh, not coming home with a whole lot, you know, so yeah. it's difficult, you know, but you, you did in anything you could to stay alive and, and keep playing music, you know, but I think a lot of people assume that it's a very glamorous and you know, uh, kind of she-she job or something. Yeah. And uh, it's very much the opposite in a way, you know. Not that there's not great beauty in all of that, of course, but, uh, you know, it can be really hard on the person physically, mentally, and uh, depending on the degree of success or how you take, you know, how you, what you consider to be success. Right. It can be uh, a little, you know, it can be harmful. We are looking forward to seeing you on Sunday out at Cat's Cradle. Of course, it's you and your all-star band, Mitch Easter, Chris Stamey from the DBs, Rob Ladd of the Connells, Doug Davis, Caitlin Carey, and others. It's going to be a really a terrific show on Sunday night. I get to go out there and host it as well, so I'm looking forward to oh, wonderful. Uh, hanging out. And um, yeah, man. again, we're going to help out the Sims Foundation, which supports yes. the mental yes. health of NC musicians and their dependents. They've been doing it for, you know, 28 years in Texas, and now they're they're moving up to our way. So we're so thankful to have you in town and to have Sims Foundation coming here. Well, thank you very much for your support, and hope to see everybody on Sunday.